Hey, it's Tyler here for bleepajeep.com. This week, let's talk about what in the heck is a full float rear axle. Blackbirds by the thousands fall down from the sky. You taste the blood and feathers. It helps you realize. So what makes a, an axle full floating? I guess the, the simplest way to explain it is that the weight of the vehicle does not rest on the axle shaft, it rests on the axle housing. And let me show you what that means. The majority of your rear axles for four-wheel drives will come in one of two types, either a semi-float or a full float. Most of your SUVs and your light trucks, your half-tons, will have a semi-float rear axle. What that means is the housing will come out, it will have a flange, the flange will have a spot here for a bearing and a seal, and then there'll be a retaining plate that holds that bearing and that seal in place. Now I have removed the bearing and the seal on this Ford 9 inch axle, but the seal goes on, then the bearing, and then there's a collar, and they're pressed on, and they're on there super tight. That collar holds the bearing on this axle. You then insert it into the housing. The problem with a semi-float rear is this axle has to handle rotational force, but it also has to support the weight of the vehicle through this bearing. So all of the weight of the vehicle and cargo is on a single bearing and it's pressing down on this axle. So this axle has to handle rotational force to move the vehicle forward and it has to handle the weight of the vehicle, which is a kind of a, I don't know what they call it, if it's a torsional force, but this axle is trying to be bent this way and it's trying to be twisted. So it has to, it has to withstand both of those forces. Compare that now to this 14 bolt full floating rear axle. The first thing you'll notice is this big spindle sticking out the end. And this spindle is what is going to support the weight of the vehicle and how it does that is the hub, in this case it's got uh, drum brakes, but this hub has a big bearing right here and a bearing in here and it slides over this spindle and then it's retained, you see these threads and this keyway, it's retained by a great big old nut. Then your tire bolts to this. What that means is that the axle shaft doesn't have to support any of the weight of the vehicle. All it has to handle is the rotational force that will propel the vehicle forward. That makes this a, a really, really strong design for a couple of reasons. Number one is that that rotational force, the axle doesn't have to support any of the weight of the vehicle, so it can handle a lot, a lot of that rotational force. The second thing is because there's two bearings, or two bearings in here, the overall weight of the vehicle and cargo is distributed over two bearings instead of a single bearing like I showed you in the semi-float rear. Now there's another advantage of a, flow fo a, a full float rear end. I've kind of just slipped this on here, but this is how it would be assembled. And there's a nut in here that retains this hub, like I said before, your tire attaches to this which means the tire is connected to the housing completely independent of the axle shaft. Now the axle shaft, this is a flanged one, it would slide down inside the housing and then it's secured out here by these bolts. What that does is if you ever happen to break this axle, <coughs> the wheel and hub and, and the whole assembly is retained on the housing by this big nut and spindle. 
So if you snap this axle, your wheel and tire isn't going to come flying off the vehicle. NASCAR has been using full float rear ends for a long time because it's just a safer way to do it. If you uh, can imagine a NASCAR snapping a rear axle and that tire come flying off of there, it just becomes like a missile. So they use full float rear ends for that. It, it, it's a safety thing, not only a strength thing, but a safety thing. Now what are some things to consider before switching to a, a full float rear end? Well, first thing is they're really heavy, uh, especially if you go with one with drum brakes. These, uh, they're just massively heavy because they're, they're bigger meteor assemblies. A uh, second thing is the center section, the differential itself, is going to be quite a bit larger than your Dana 44, your Dana 35, your Chrysler 8 and a quarter, even your Ford 9 inch. These center sections are just massive, which can create clearance problems. Now there are ways to get around that. This is a 14 bolt. Matt's got a really great video on a shave kit that you can take a, a couple of inches off the bottom of this housing to increase your ground clearance. Um, Generally, you don't install one of these unless you're going to massive tires somewhere in the range of about 40 inches. So, you know, with the increase in tire size, you're going to gain some ground clearance, but that is one thing to consider. The center sections on these are massive. Because these are so heavy, they're going to increase your unsprung weight quite a bit. Now, going over unsprung weight is probably worth a video in and of itself, but just really quickly, all it is is what your running gear weighs, so your axles, wheels, and tires, if you were to remove everything else from the Jeep, what those weigh. Why that matters is the more unsprung weight you have, the more power it takes to get all that rotating and moving, and the more brake you need to get it all stopped again. So they can sap a lot of the performance of your engine if you've got all this gigantic amount of rotational weight that you've got to get moving and stopped every time you move your vehicle. That's all unsprung weight is. Last thing to consider is if you switch to a full float rear axle it's probably going to come out of a one ton truck which means it's probably going to have an eight lug bolt pattern. That means that unless you switch your front axle at the same time to the same lug pattern you're going to end up with a different bolt pattern on the rear than you do on than you've got on the front and that's really not a a good thing that means you have to carry two different spares um, so just a thing to consider when you switch to one of these axles you probably want to switch to a one ton axle in the front at the same time and make sure they have the same lug pattern so that you only have to buy one set of replacement wheels to fit all four corners well, that's it for this week, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope that helps clear up some of the confusion about these full float, semi float, what, what everybody's talking about when they talk about those, those axles. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so we can keep these videos coming. We appreciate you watching the channel. Go check out bleepinjeep.com for all the best off road how to videos on the internet. And uh, visit the store. We've got some great t shirts, stickers, and other things out there. Go check it out. Hey, we'll see you guys next time.